Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visite suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Наши программы предлагают много языков. Пожалуйста, посмотрите suprememastertv.com касая черта schedule. If we don't do something, people 100 years on will look at the way we feed the population as barbaric. In much the same way, the slave trade is viewed in hindsight. Supreme Master Ching Hai gratefully presents the Shining World Advocacy Award to Miss Claire Drews plus 10,000 US dollars as a humble token of support for your lifelong dedication to protecting the well-being of chicken people. May you and your loved ones enjoy continued blessings and constant protection by heaven. Continue watching to find out more. Vegan, the true Muslim. Tanat eh, esteemed viewers, I just said how are you in Klin Chong Yati, an indigenous language spoken by the Klin Chong First Nation. I'm Martin. The peace-loving Klin Chong people wish your days to be enriched with heavenly inspirations. Warning, sensitive images. Welcome to Chicken's Lib with Claire Drews, vegan, part one of two. On today's program, we meet a true pioneer for the rights of animal people, a renowned author and the co-founder of Chicken's Lib, Ms. Claire Drews. Chicken's Lib was one of the first organizations in the world to campaign against the cruel treatment of the people from the chicken kingdom who were being forcefully raised in animal people factories as so-called egg layers or broilers. Ms. Druce devoted more than 40 years to exposing these barbaric conditions and challenging the legality of the animal people industry. Claire was first inspired to start her animal people activism after reading the book Animal Machines by Ruth Harrison. In the book, Ruth Harrison, a vegetarian, revealed detailed facts about how the meat industry was both cruel to animal people and inherently dangerous to human health. She went round farms and I think in those days and for quite a long time farmers were not on the guard at all because they'd been encouraged by the Ministry of Agriculture then and they thought it was the modern, clever way to go. And some people wouldn't dream of putting their hens in battery cages, but the majority thought, well, this is what we do, and they were recommended to do it. So um, she was able to just go around saying, I'm writing a book or want, want information, and she saw into broiler sheds and the terrible calf stalls and all these things, and she got it all out down, all the facts and figures. I remember her saying that somebody had said, well, how do you get across the shed when all the broilers are filling up all the space like they do at the end of their lives? And the um, farmer said to the electrician, oh, just tread on them, you know. So this was the attitude, animal machines. And I read this book and it was entirely shocking. So uh, yeah, that was really the trigger of it, Ruth Harrison's Animal Machines. Mm, which was a good title because it sums it up really. After reading this book, Claire and her mother, Violet Spaulding, also a vegan, agreed that they must do something to protect the lives of these innocent, helpless animal people. They decided to concentrate on the people from the chicken kingdom, millions of whom were forced to live their lives in filthy and overcrowded battery cages. We decided we'd better not take on the whole range of factory farming. It seemed a good idea to concentrate. And we found we could buy them in the east end of London. Terrible, terrible conditions, end of lay so-called, which meant they would be about a year old, year and a half old. And uh, they were stacked outside um, butcher shops waiting to be slaughtered, ritually slaughtered. In, and they were willing to sell us some. And... Uh, so to see the real thing and to be able to show it to people. And also at that time, 
95% of all eggs in this country were from batteries. And the battery cage is really, it's hard to imagine anything worse, anything crueler. If they overstocked birds in a cage, not even one of them could spread their wings. So it was just shocking, utterly shocking. And we stuck to just that species for a long time. Claire and Violet co-founded the organization Chickens Lib. They began their work in the early 1970s, long before the internet or any other forms of mass information dissemination were available. As a result, informing others about the cruelty on meat and egg producing factories was a highly labor-intensive job. For example, after collecting facts and photographs about the cruelty in the animal people factories, they would mail these out to thousands of people. When we sent out fact sheets, I think we had sent 2,000, 2 or 3,000 at a time, including, also including the, um, the industry. They got them too, whether they wanted them or not, yes. What a lot of work, Claire. Vegan, because we are very well informed nowadays on the livestock cause of climate change. We will take a moment to thank the Divine for all the people who devote their lives to protecting our innocent, helpless people from the animal kingdom. We'll be right back after this message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back, compassionate viewers. Besides mailing out thousands of letters, Chicken's Lib used several other ways to raise awareness about the plight of the chicken women who are forced to lay eggs for humans. For example, in 1971, they held a demonstration at Parliament Square in London, UK. To illustrate the unbearable cruelty of a life spent in a battery cage, they displayed one cage containing four egg-laying chicken women while a second cage contained five human beings. They also staged protests in government offices. And it was easier to be outrageous in those days because, I mean, for instance, we could barge into the Ministry of Agriculture in Whitehall Place and refuse to leave. And we took a cage of four ex-battery hens. That was quite a funny expedition because they, they thought they would placate us a bit by showing us a ridiculous plan that was um, for something called the getaway cage. And it was sort of four times the size, let's say, of a cage, with, but with perches and different levels. And they, <laughs> and they took years and years researching into this thing. And I'd said to the vet, but what about the dropping from the birds above? And, and they looked awkward and said, well, we haven't quite thought that one out. And uh, then in Sweden, they did some research and found that it was rather unhygienic. And as I put in my book, um, they, we could have saved them all that 24 years or whatever it was of so stupid, you know. In Claire's book, Chickens Lib, she writes, If we don't do something, people 100 years on will look at the way we feed the population as barbaric, in much the same way the slave trade is viewed in hindsight. Claire and her associates repeatedly informed government authorities about the abhorrent conditions under which the chicken people were being raised in meat and egg producing factories, but to no avail. Even when the authorities so-called inspected the factories, they would turn a blind eye to what was happening. Claire recalls one time when her good friend, Wendy Valentine, also a vegan, came across a chicken people factory or battery unit with especially horrendous conditions. Wendy with Valentine came across a really shocking battery unit with long dead birds, the other birds standing on them, you know, and it was a hot summer's day and the door was open. So they saw all this, photographed it, and I think even videoed it maybe. And so she phoned me up and I said, well, all you can do is, you know, complain to the ministry. And the ministry sounded very concerned, said, well, go straight away and did. By the evening of the same day, and I'd spoken to this vet at the ministry, she was another person. She was lying, just lying, because, and yet Wendy had taken all these photographs and made postcards out of it. So they were quite shameless and got away with it year after year, which has been so frustrating. And what can you do? You do the right thing quite, you know, repeatedly and... Uh, well, we reported hell holes to them and they've just got away with it. So it's been a very corrupt scene. I can only call it really corrupt. 
One of Claire's major objectives was to raise awareness that all people from the animal kingdom, including chicken people, are sentient beings who deserve our love and protection. Anybody who's given it really good thought realizes they're sentient, and they're as sentient and as intelligent as cats and dogs, and people worship their cats and dogs, make them family members, don't they, virtually? And yet the same people will happily eat. And of course, a lot of these nature programs with Attenborough and so on, we see that they're more clever than we are in, if it's in their interests, they can do the most extraordinary things. So we've been very arrogant, I think. So much information is out there now. People who've studied chickens, for instance, and they have an amazing range of different vocalizations and it means things to, to each other. I mean, we still don't understand how birds migrate, do we? Nobody really knows how they come back to the exact same nest in South Africa or something from England. And astonishing things go on in nature that, and they're constantly being found out, aren't they? More how trees almost telling, you know, sending messages and under the roots and it's a fact and we, we don't know the half of it, literally, or more than half. We totally agree, Claire. We have so much more to learn about our amazing animal co-citizens and other wonders of the living world. We are deeply grateful to Claire Druce for her tireless dedication to protect the lives of animal people. May she be blessed abundantly for her noble work. Supreme Master Ching Hai gratefully present the Shining World Advocacy Award to Miss Claire Druce plus 10,000 US dollars as a humble token of support for your lifelong dedication to protecting the well-being of chicken people. May you and your loved ones enjoy continued blessings and constant protection by heaven. Supreme Master Ching Hai is deeply grateful to the most merciful, beloved God for all the financial help, comfort, and support to the afflicted and needy and or any good cause over the years as a humble vessel for here's compassion and love toward here's precious children. To learn more about Claire Drews, please visit onegreenplanet.org forward slash author forward slash Claire underscore Drews. If you treat animals with kindness and gentleness and care, you'll go in deeper respect and care for yourself and for other human beings. Reverend Father Frank Mon, vegan. Generous viewers, thank you for being here with us today. Please join us again on Thursday, December 30th for the concluding episode of Chickens Live with Claire Drews, Vegan. Coming up next is Catholic Priest Should Preach the True Gospel of Lord Jesus, Part 4 of 8 on Between Master and Disciples, right after Noteworthy News. May you enjoy freedom, joy, and spiritual upliftment through the grace of the divine. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash VE.